this is Jerry from Vet Tech Bites, and today we are going to be talking about dilated cardiomyopathy. Also, I cut myself shaving. I'm really upset about it, so I'm sorry it's distracting. I hate it. Anyway, moving on. So, dilated cardiomyopathy. So DCM is one of the most common heart diseases acquired in canines. Um, it's typically not seen in smaller dogs or cats without some form of nutrition deficiency, but it is very common in middle to older aged large breed dogs. So without further ado, let's get into today's Vet Tech Breakdown. Okay, so we're briefly gonna go over just normal anatomy of the heart briefly, just because we did the same thing in the last video. So we know that blood enters the heart through the cranial and cauda vena cava into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into our right ventricle, up into our pulmonary artery, into our lungs, <sighs> breathe out, into our left atrium through our pulmonary vein, uh, down through our mitral valve or bicuspid valve into our left ventricle, and then out to the aorta, right? This pink fleshy bit is the myocardium and one of the things about the myocardium is that's what gives the heart its contractility its force of its contraction so when we talk about contractility we mean the force that goes behind each cardiac contraction now when we talk about dilated cardiomyopathy or DCM this is a disease that causes systolic dysfunction or a problem with contraction or force of contraction now, ordinarily, the heart is able to output everything that's getting input through the force of the contraction. It maintains an equilibrium. However, with dilated cardiomyopathy, the heart is unable to really get the blood out into circulation. So you end up with a backflow that increases the pressure inside of the chambers of the heart. Typically, DCM affects only the left side of the heart. However, there is the potential for it to also affect the right side of the heart. And since the heart muscle can't really work as efficiently to pump blood out of the heart, blood kind of backs up within the heart chambers and then the heart actually gets larger as a result. So as you can see here, this is albeit end stage, however, this is a good representation of how DCM actually looks. So typically this all starts in the left ventricle. The left ventricle is primarily responsible for getting blood out into systemic circulation. So when we have a systolic dysfunction in our left ventricle, we're not going to be able to do that and as a result you get an increase in left ventricular pressure and so eventually that increase in pressure will back up through our mitral valve into our left atrium which will increase left atrial pressure now what that's going to do over the long term is eventually right here in our pulmonary vein it's going to back up when the pump is not outputting it's just going to back up the problem that arises when it starts backing up into our pulmonary vein is that that's where our lungs are. So when you get blood backing up into our pulmonary vein and then back into our lungs, that's when you start seeing pulmonary edema. And pulmonary edema is one of the markers of going into congestive heart failure. So at that point in time, we would need to start diuretics because the heart is unable to process the amount of fluid that's in the system we got to take some of it out. Uh, another thing we can add would be um, a positive inotrope, such as pemobendin. What pemobendin does is increase the force of cardiac contraction to kind of combat that systolic dysfunction. However, if right-sided failure is also present, so let's say the, uh, the right ventricle is all of a sudden also having systolic dysfunction, you're going to see the same backup problems. So eventually, this increased right ventricular pressure is going to back up through the tricuspid valve into the right atrium, where it will increase right atrial pressure. And the problem that arises from having increased right atrial pressure is there's not that much pressure in the venous system, which is the entire system leading to the heart, right? So if you have an increase in right atrial pressure, eventually blood is going to start backing up 
back into our Vena Cava, and eventually it will actually do what's called extra base. Blood will actually leak out into the abdominal cavity, which is called ascites. So, if you have a patient coming in difficulty breathing with a belly full of fluid, it might be a good idea to do an echocardiogram. Also, with an increased right atrial pressure, it will also back up upwards, which can lead to pleural effusion, which is fluid in the chest. As you can see here, all of the ventricles are really dilated, so you can see that in the walls of the myocardium being far thinner than it would be over in our healthy heart, right? And you'll actually see that on an x-ray, it'll be pretty globular, globe, like a globe shape. All right, so now let's go over clinical signs. Um, now this is gonna vary patient to patient, depending on if it's left-sided, right-sided, both, what have you. Um, also certain breeds, it can happen sooner than others. Uh, but uh, a general consensus is gonna be exercise intolerance. If you're going out for a walk, and they're getting really winded, or they just flat out pass out on the spot and wake up a few minutes later, that's a good sign. It's called syncope, which is our next clinical sign, or fainting, syncope. And as this progresses, you may also see a loss of appetite, pale gums, uh, increased heart rate, coughing. Uh, the reason they cough is because the heart actually dilates so much that it actually pushes on the trachea. And so when uh, it starts beating hard or fast, it actually irritates the trachea and stimulates a cough. Uh, periods of difficulty breathing or when they start panting just for no really reason. Just generalized weakness, not walking as, as well, not being able to get up as easy, anything like that. Also, abdominal distension if they're getting ascites. Now, how do we go about diagnosing DCM? So, the gold standard of diagnosing would be an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart. That's the definitive way, it's the only way to know 100% if your patient has DCM or not, echocardiogram. However, another thing you can do in conjunction with that would be uh, thoracic x-rays to see like that, that circular heart. And as the clinical signs start to progress, that's when we can start adding other medications like ACE inhibitors to kind of relax the blood vessels, decrease sodium and water retention, things like that kind of remove the renin angiotensin aldosterone system from the equation in some way shape or form but honestly that's pretty much it um, dcm is a progressive disease and there's no real treatment focused towards fixing it um, it's a genetic disease for the most part um, all we can really do is kind of manage the clinical signs treat it symptomatically try to increase the efficiency of the heart for as much as we can uh, before it gets to a point where they become unmanageable, i.e. they get ascites, pleural effusion, uh, pericardial effusion, and pulmonary edema, which is going to primarily be the thing that takes them. On top of this, um, toward the end stages of disease, this can also lead to arrhythmias, um, which you'll be able to see on an ECG, um, which could also end up um, being fatal at any point in time. And that's it. We got clinical signs, we got how to diagnose it, we got medications and how to treat it, uh, we got etiology, we got clinical course. Those are quick and dirty about DCM. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you learned a little something about dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about, about maybe what you can take back to the clinic or if you're a pet owner, maybe you're uh, looking to just understand a little bit more. I hope I was able to help out with that. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it. Don't if you don't. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything in the future. I'm Jared with Bites. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.